Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we'll be exploring the connection between vitamin K2, calcium metabolism, and overall health. We'll look at how vitamin K2 directs calcium into your bones and helps keep your arteries clear, which can reduce your risk of heart disease. We'll also discuss the influence of genetics on vitamin K2 absorption and touch on the best dietary sources. Joining me is my co-host, Alara Skye, who has a deep interest in natural health and brings a wealth of knowledge on these topics. Alara, thank you for being here. Thank you, Ethan. I'm looking forward to diving into this subject. Vitamin K2 doesn't always get the same attention as other nutrients like vitamin D or calcium, yet it's so important. We know that for decades, many people believed that taking calcium supplements alone was the best way to promote bone health. However, that approach may fail if you're missing the key cofactors. Without vitamin K2, calcium can build up where it shouldn't, especially in the arteries, and leave bones weaker than most people realize. That's a serious point. We often hear about osteoporosis and how crucial it is to fortify bones, particularly as people get older. In recent research, higher levels of vitamin K2 intake have shown significant benefits in boosting bone mineral density and reducing the risk of fractures. These improvements are most evident in older adults, including postmenopausal women, who are at the highest risk for osteoporosis-related fractures. According to these findings, individuals who supplement or consume more vitamin K2 end up with stronger bones and fewer breaks, especially in the hip and spine. Exactly. Vitamin K2 accomplishes that by activating two vital proteins, osteocalcin and matrix GLA protein. Osteocalcin helps calcium bind effectively to your bone matrix, while matrix GLA protein prevents that same calcium from being deposited in your arteries. Essentially, Vitamin K2 directs calcium to the right locations and keeps it out of the wrong ones. When people are low in K2, they risk having both weaker bones and arterial calcification, which can further raise heart disease risk. Also, vitamin D plays a complementary role. If you're taking vitamin D3, you enhance calcium absorption, but you need K2 to ensure that calcium goes where it belongs. That interplay underscores how multiple nutrients work in synergy and a one-dimensional approach may fail. It's interesting that genetics can impact vitamin K2 use, specifically the APOE genotype. Certain APOE variations lead to faster vitamin K2 clearance from the body, meaning you'd need a higher intake. Others clear it more slowly, raising concerns about how it might accumulate. Without testing, many people remain unaware of their genetic predisposition. In one particular example, a person and his spouse were both taking the same K2 dose, yet their results were different due to their distinct APOE profiles. Yes, that anecdote highlights how two individuals could follow the same regimen, but end up with different vitamin K2 levels at the cellular level. The key is that there are six possible APOE genotype combinations, 2 2 2 3 3 3 3 4 4 4 and so on. If you're APOE 2 slash 2, you clear vitamin K2 more slowly, which could increase the risk of it building up too much over time if you consistently use the longer-acting forms. Meanwhile, APOE three-quarters or four-quarters genotypes clear vitamin K2 more rapidly, so you might need a higher dose or a different form. This distinction is crucial for fine-tuning your supplementation. Let's discuss the different forms of vitamin K2, mainly MK4 and MK7. MK4 is found in animal foods like meat, liver, eggs, and dairy. It has a short half-life of just a few hours in the body. MK7, on the other hand, is longer-lasting, around 72 hours, and is found in fermented foods like natto. For people whose bodies are slower at clearing vitamin K2, such as APOE22 types, the longer half-life in MK7 might cause issues if too much accumulates. Others who clear it quickly might benefit from MK7 precisely because it remains available for a longer period. Correct. Individuals need to consider whether they're using MK4 or MK7, not only because of their genetic profile, but also because each form is derived from different sources. 
MK7 can be obtained from natto and certain fermented cheeses, though not all fermented foods contain it, as that depends on the specific bacterial strains used. MK4, while beneficial, may require more frequent intake because of how quickly it leaves your system. People who are uncertain about which form to use might consider discussing these factors with a knowledgeable health practitioner or, if possible, checking their APOE genotype. Now, beyond vitamin K2, we should also think about making sure that any extra calcium you consume doesn't end up lodging itself in your arteries. Step one is ensuring that if you're taking vitamin D3, you're balancing it with K2. A practical guideline is roughly 100 to 200 micrograms of K2 for every 1,000 IU of vitamin D3. Alongside that, another crucial nutrient is magnesium, which helps regulate calcium in tissues. Many experts recommend gradually increasing magnesium intake until you find the level that works for you, an approach that can help avoid potential digestive issues. Precisely, and cutting out inflammatory vegetable oils is also a pivotal step for healthy arteries. These oils, like soybean or canola, contain high levels of linoleic acid, which can harm arterial health. When your arteries are already weakened or inflamed, calcium deposits have an easier time forming. Switching to more stable fats, such as grass-fed butter, ghee, or tallow, may help reduce this inflammation. That, in turn, supports better calcium distribution to the bones rather than the arteries. Processed foods often contain these undesirable oils, so avoiding them is crucial. For anyone seeking practical ways to boost their K2 levels, start with dietary sources. Natto is among the richest in MK7, though the flavor and texture can be an acquired taste. Certain hard cheeses, especially Gouda and Brie, can supply moderate amounts of K2. Grass-fed egg yolks and organ meats, like liver, also provide MK4. If those aren't part of your regular diet, consider supplements, but remember to pay attention to which K2 form you're taking. As we mentioned, genetics can guide whether MK4 or MK7 is a better fit. And if you go the supplement route, timing can make a difference. Some people prefer to take vitamin K2 with their evening meal, along with vitamin D, magnesium, or calcium if needed. The combination of K2, D3, and magnesium is a powerful team for ensuring calcium travels to bones instead of arteries. Meanwhile, many find they don't need high-dose calcium supplements if they're getting enough from foods like dairy, leafy greens, and bone broth, and combining it properly with K2 and D3. The body can handle calcium naturally when the cofactors are in balance. Before we wrap up, let's quickly summarize the top takeaways. First, vitamin K2 is pivotal for directing calcium where it's needed most, into your bones. Second, insufficient K2 can mean weaker bones and a higher chance of arterial calcification. Third, genetics can influence how your body processes K2, so dosage and form might need to be tailored to your APOE genotype. Fourth, balance your K2 with vitamin D3, get adequate magnesium, and remove processed vegetable oils to optimize your body's ability to handle calcium. Ilara, any final thoughts? That's a comprehensive overview. Ultimately, vitamin K2 represents a missing link in many people's health routines. By choosing the right sources, whether natto, cheese, or supplements, and balancing them with vitamin D, magnesium, and a healthy diet, you can improve bone strength and guard against arterial calcification. It's about supporting your body's natural processes rather than overwhelming them with isolated nutrients. Thank you, Ethan, for guiding this discussion. And I hope our listeners now have a clearer sense of why vitamin K2 is so critical for overall health. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.